previously on Star Trek. Did uh, Star Trek basically just the first. Uh, actually, that's a great question. Yes, that's one of the things. Very regularly. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell these days, isn't it? When you're rewatching stuff on like a streaming platform, they usually either cut those out or just like re-edit them. At least on Amazon Prime with Star Trek, um, they usually just like give them like a skip recap button, but they don't edit them out. So, but like virtually any two-parter and some episodes that are like follow-ups of like other episodes that like had continuity that's important to them, they'll get those. I believe it was usually the computer voice that did it. Anyway, yeah, last time uh, the ship blew up, and then we undid that, and the ship did not blow up. I'm good. Help me with him. Enjoy the, like, yawning absence of a victory off. parade waiting for the two people who saved the ship. There's <laughs> nobody even here. Not even the There's medical one team. Person. Oh, there they are. Although like, from the looks the doctor of it, the, could have been the door, waiting. the door they went into was like inside the cell, so like maybe nobody is normally assigned to to this area, and that's why there's nobody around. What's going on with the lighting here? Did I mess up the gamma? No, it just actually looks like that. <laughs> we didn't finish the sets. No, okay, this gamma doesn't look wrong here. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. <laughs> yeah, we That's fucked up the station, but we're good. But if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure... If they just, like, one day skipped the Trek no Babel and just said, yeah, we're good. To the station. Like, in response to a query, I could probably get behind that. To my ready room. Commander Rydick? Funny part is, I was just thinking about how I've never, ever heard them call it Sif in any other edition of Star Trek media before. It's always structural integrity field. They say it out. It, it does give it a bit of a, I don't know, fan-oriented thing. Orders. I guess. A, a bit of a fanfic feel. Well. Because fans would call it the Sif. People who edit wikis would call it the Sif. But, like, the person who is writing the show for TV, for a non-serialized TV show from 1994 or whatever, they're going to say it every time because this might be your first time watching a Star Trek. So, uh, I, uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but last time uh, this guy was on the station and he told us to blow the docking clan, so we said, fuck that, and reversed the whole polarity instead, so... How do you think we should play this one? Uh, honestly, none of these are really the correct answer. The correct answer is just be like, yes, and then to talk her through the scenario. But it was the right decision, I think, is the closest strong answer. All right, let's hit that. Respectfully, Captain, I made the right choice given the information I had. You disobeyed my orders. And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet oh man the red flags to my credibility on this ship from the top to the bottom you didn't have the facts uh to... all right yeah we'll, we'll just lean into this one captain oh I'm he's not happy honest, so here it is fine maybe i shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order but you were wrong you weren't on board and you didn't have all the information so I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside <laughs> and trust your crew. Oh, yeah. Trust me. Ah, the shortest I first officer man, gig of all time. Stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would Oh, man. That... <laughs> you never really know if you weren't in those shoes. Nothing against the voice actor they have no, here, but... Um, down to, you did what you had to. This is such a J.K. Simmons role. For me. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you for understanding seems appropriate after that disclosure. Thank yeah. you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command as well as you do. I'm sure you will someday. Seems to be taking this rather well, given that we just said like, no, fuck that. To depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. I mean, you could not. You could argue with the abs the chain of command, but you cannot abs argue with the absence of dead crew members. I guess what's bothering me about the pseudo episodic nature of this game is that like they're not episodes, they're All scenes, basically. Readiness. Yeah. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. I enjoy the idea of I, I enjoy for a lot of reasons the sort of consistent <laughs> analogies to naval travel and exploration in Star Trek. You know, the, uh, like, I'll ask is a tall ship title being that. Captain on the bridge. Partially because it, you know, it kind of creates a continuity of history, and partially because you really do start to appreciate how everyone in Starfleet who talks about, like, sailing ships is just a huge fucking nerd. <laughs> Let's make it a good one. The thing is, they've already established this guy's a train nerd. I was expecting more fucking train puns. It's just like the equivalent of like we're talking about your car as though it is your steed, like your horse, your valiant destrier. I mean the the whole like ships in Star Trek are just boats in space thing is very very well established in Star Trek uh, canon. Like in terms of how people refer to them. Oh, we got the bridge yeah. windows. My it? least favorite thing about Atari modern Street. Star Trek. Prepare to go to war bait. Yep. Which, Hi, admittedly, is a really you know stupid Dude. nitpick to have Me. on the list of other incredibly dumb things. Engage. But it, it bugs me that they've gone from, like, computer monitors to, well, we just suck a fucking window in the front of the ship. I thought it was all transparent aluminum. Well, it is, but it's, it's still a window, which was not the case until the Kelvin movies. What the... Whoa. Careful. Oh, that's right. Thank you. This I'm is fine. happening now. Really, I... Uh... You don't look fine. Do we need our drugs? Yeah, our space it's time for space diabetes. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Damn, that sucks. I'm... I'm shocked that they are they have taken this relatively obscure bit of Star Trek lore and made it very obscure. A, a, a character beat for this entire for the game's protagonist. I think that's really interesting. Ah, oh, yeah, get that purple well, juice. That was quite a scare. A few minutes more, and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first office. I already made that <laughs> joke. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval. Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. 
and people's numbers have dwindled despite the Federation's I mean, efforts. Isn't she only half a couple of alternative to the Duridian yes. need to survive? Yet you join Starfleet and manage to thrive. But then Spock was only half Vulcan, and everyone referred to him Maybe almost exclusively as a Vulcan, so this is also something that's well established in Star Trek. Star Trek microaggressions. Yeah. I know what it means. And I know the responsibility. But we're going to other people. The, the, the race I politics mean, of Star Wars. I mean, in fairness, Spock himself regularly refers to himself as basically just a Vulcan, so. Something else. Then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. <laughs> Nobody on this crew trusts the captain. <laughs> Everybody's just like, yeah, he's this is everything's fucked. You, you need to like step in. He's willing to admit. He's overstressed. Operating in the pressure. I like a lot of really mind. gritty mutinies in Star Trek. Never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. Do the notion the new shows have weird mutinies, right? Further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire Yeah, pretty regularly to be honest. Breakthrough discovery. A major innovation. Something he can put his name on. It, it is kind of weird how much this wants to be TNG era, 90s era Star Trek, given that this is not the tone or the aesthetic or anything that the current Star Trek stuff is going for. To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. I mean, there's a significant contingent of fans that are like, hey, we'd like it if you went back to this, please. So that doesn't surprise me that much. Especially I mean, when it comes to, like, video games, where you have more freedom to just kind of go and do whatever. Huh. I guess word travels fast around yeah. here. I mean, I mean, even something like Strange it's New Worlds is, I guess, closer to Old Trek, but even then, it's it's kind of yeah more more willing to experiment, be campy, and fun with it in a way that TNG never really was. Yeah. Mind you, without regular infusions of I mean, part of the inevitable that's being side effects of a bad. variegated franchise like that. Star Trek yeah. is, though... That from a brand management perspective, inevitably uh, headquarters is going to want you dealing with the most recent iterations. But you know, each individual kind of entry in the series, in like the franchise, is its own Sorry. vibe. And there's always one that people are going to want to play with more than others. Intrude, so it felt right. Appropriate to wait out here. We were all worried about you. But you, you... or I should say, go I ahead. Was... Sorry. I was, I was just saying, it's like you know. I actually I, I lost my Well, I just you were you were saying how corporate's going to make them eventually start doing the more modern Star Treks just because it's the current iteration of the franchise. And now all I can picture is like a, a Max Payne game featuring eighty year old Jean Luc Picard diving with firing guns. And I mean that that's kind of what what happens at times in Picard so I know that's what I'm saying like that's the modern version of the franchise um but but also like I I would argue that the the reality is actually kind of reversed where they just keep going back to Kirk Spock and McCoy in the original series I mean they've done that they did that for the Kelvin, like the J.J. The Abrams films, and they did that again with Star Trek Discovery, and now we've got Strange New Worlds, which is kind of spun off of Discovery, but also is dealing right. with, like, this is going to turn into the original series in a few years. Right, like, but then, but that that was just then the current version of Star Trek. Like, if you see, if you played Star Trek Bridge Command around then, uh, what was right. the default vibe? The default vibe was J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. So, be honest. I'm sad that that franchise died with Motorcycle. That Motorcycle Rugged. movie. Rugged. That was actually the best one. Okay. It was. was That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sad it died there, because, like, that was fun. Yeah. I was looking in on you, too, by the way. But since it's just us... Who knows? Maybe in another five years, they'll I finally get Chris Hemsworth way. back on board. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around. You mean Chris Pine? Or worse. No, so the thing is, they were they were gonna do the fourth movie that's been in development hell for like almost a decade now was gonna be about like they were gonna bring back George Kirk, Kirk's father, who in 2009 was played by Chris Hemsworth, sort of right around the time that Chris Hemsworth was going from, oh, I recognize that guy, to holy shit, it's Thor. Um, 
I'm just a really good guesser. And, uh, and, 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 and then, like, fall, apparently there's been that. problems with trying to get him back on account of, like, the fact that he's, you know, now and I'll just very much more choice. in demand than he was We've been really good friends 15 years ago. <laughs> and they couldn't get a director for it, and they couldn't get writers, and, just and it's just been, it's, it's been in forever, like, maybe this will happen. The typical Hollywood, um... In context, wait, hang on a second. Have to explain it. In context, yeah. this feels a little bit like they're just saying, "Hey, uh, do you want a romance? Would you like one? <laughs> Would you like to have one?" Yeah, I. If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? It it does kind of come out of left field. Um, they are going somewhere are with this, me? but I just said yes. It is. I wanted to be sure I heard is that right. Ah, oh, yeah, this character Sorry. that I've met for two minutes. Oh, I guess we have something. If he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of war. So I've been kind of wondering. Oh, hello. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Um, what your opinion is of this game's we art style? Really. We can take it. We are the That's a good question. The There's a lot that it's right subtly it. doing right correctly. Like the way that the faces are lit and kind of the, the especially like with the hero characters, some of the details correctly suggests the lighting conditions of the 90s sets in a way that I think is really noteworthy. Yeah. The interface looks like it was done on screen on the last day of development with assets that they had as placeholders. Also, yeah. Um, it, it, it gives a little bit of Xbox. Uh, one or not one Xbox 360 at launch vibes the UI yeah yeah like it, it does feel like there are there are aspects where there's there's not enough light sources on the screen like lighting of the faces is fine but like we had that bit at the very start of the this week where oh this corridor just is inexplicably super dark for no apparent reason and it seems like there's a lot of that going on in this game you sure? In ways that I don't I'm sure. really understand like why it, it happened that way. Um Come on, Diaz. I mean when it comes to stuff like that, ran out of time is usually the, what it ultimately shakes down yeah. to. Stabilize the rotation. Okay, this is the I mean, like, that looked fine. I, it's, it's really just, like, the, the main interface element. Yeah. We're pulling in debris. I'm on it. I hope you guys are really looking forward to stuff like this, because this is going to be most of the minigames that this character gets to do are these fucking... Weird but, but that's, interface puzzles that happen once. I like that because it's. It, I mean, that is sort of the fantasy, right? Like the fantasy of being on Star Trek is approaching these arcane, broadly shot. drawn terminals and just being able to, to use it like an expert to do sci-fi crap. Can't handle it. Yeah, kind of, but like the, in space. we we will get so. we will get to some where it's not at all clear what you're supposed to be doing in it and. On it. And then there's a bunch of that. I just... Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17. 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. I, I, there is a bit of a flattening effect going on, though, where it's like, 
there, this 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 huge spaceship has a crew of 700 and their families and it boils down to about two people doing their jobs in order to solve every problem well, i don't think this ship has nearly the cr- like a 700 man crew i suspect this is probably more like 250 how, how many w- did the enterprise usually have wasn't it like uh, almost a thousand depends on depends on which enterprise we're talking about the D was about a thousand. The E was like seven hundred. Original one was two hundred or so, and then four hundred or so, depending on which captain we're talking about. I realize. Oh, okay. Speaking of which captain? Jesus. Ambassador Spock. Okay. I don't know. I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. This is kind of just like... The captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. I will give them the props. This is not AI voice bullshit. This is just an actor doing a Spock voice. Yep. That was a lot of those. I really want you to just like Apologies I want the timer just to interrupt halfway through what it's supposed to and Spog walks away and you're like I should have said something to him <laughs> Our arrival was the smoothest part of our journey Your artistry with a tractor beam is commendable We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity The storm has been pretty intense <laughs> 